been in AI. It's going to be eight years this month. Uh, I'm 87% sure I'm still human. So that's good. I have a good friend. I'm not going to name them who is posting their posts with an AI avatar reading their stories. And it's coming across as really creepy <laughs> and scary because it's like very sort of AI movement. And it's one of those generated things and they're using it to market. Is that a good idea? You know, have you guys experienced that where you're using a generated avatar, much like Josh's fever dream AI background to mm -hmm. promote your organization in, in, and, and Nick's going to as well, because marketing questions, right? He's using it to do posts live and they're, they're, they're stopping me to watch them, but they're kind of awkwardly creepy. <laughs> Those are interesting. I go back and forth on like the AI generated video, AI avatar videos. Um, I think that they're, I think right now it's like they're, the, they're a shiny object because they've never been like, they're as good as they've ever been right now. But I also, I don't know, it, it, there's an element where it doesn't feel as authentic, I would also say. So I feel like, you know, the, the more that you can dive into authenticity, the more you can make sure that you're connecting the audience to you and your own specific brand and voice, um, that builds trust. And that makes sure that people aren't questioning everything that you say. I mean, you know, to an extent, obviously, if you're saying crazy things, they should question it. But, um, you know, I think that I think that it's an interesting thing. I'm very curious to see how how this industry develops, though, as well, because some of the AI generated videos are just uncanny how how good they're getting as well. So we'll see. Those things freak me out. People send me LinkedIn messages with fake <laughs> avatars trying to sell me something all the time. And it's so weird. I usually just ignore them. Like, you know, <laughs> it's just not for me. Like if you're somebody reputable, if your face is your brand and I know you from somewhere, then maybe it's cute. But like if you're a random person just sending me marketing messages with a, a video recorded by AI, I don't know how well that's going to work. Since we last spoke, tons of announcements in the news, which is awesome. That leads into the, the the first question, which is probably for Josh at this point, is is the big announcement from Apple recently about their leveraging of OpenAI and they're branding it as Apple Intelligence. And they were kind of leading in that direction of they're not AI, they're Apple Intelligence. And it's a cross between leveraging that technology and almost a marketing message of we're not, it's not tech, it's personalized. Again, the partnership we've learned a lot about. And Josh, I know you wanted to talk about this quite a bit. Yeah, it's fascinating. I think in a few weeks ago, we discussed, you know, Apple's patents for their language models running on the edge of computing and, and the devices. And then, you know, the past two weeks, we get this announcement from Apple and Apple Intelligence and their big uh, WD, WWDC and, you know, their partnership with OpenAI. It does fascinate me because it leads me to believe OpenAI is winning something. Right. You know, Apple doesn't just select random partners to work with. They usually select the winners. Right. So it's a very interesting concept. And, you know, the more that's coming out, even today, as of this morning, if you read some of the news coming out about the actual partnership that they've created, there's no money involved. Apple's not paying open AI. This is pure marketing play. This is pure open AI is doing this so that they can get access to Apple's customer base, which we all know is a specific customer base. It represents, I think, half the world, right? So there's a lot of value to that. That's not necessarily monetar monetary value. I'm excited to see, you know, how it can actually influence us at the edge on our devices, across iPads, MacBooks, you know, Apple is kind of a big ecosystem right now. Following Apple is interesting, right? It, they, they do a lot of things that just get you to think about what's really happening in the industry. And to me, filing the patent, I think six, nine months ago for putting LLMs on the edge was revolutionary. I don't know if it ever made it to real commercialization or production though, right? With this partnership announcement. So there's there's just a lot going on. And you know, I think it, it is exciting. Nick, what do you think about the open AI Apple relationship? To your point, Apple doesn't they choose the winners, right? And I, I would I would say you know, not bar none, because there's a lot of great LLMs out there. There's great small language models out there as well. But I think that it, it's hard for anybody to can, you know, kind of contend the point that OpenAI is the foundation model provider, the GPT, you know, 3, 3.5, 4, 4 Turbo, 4 O. That is at this point, the fact that so many people know that as a brand name 
They yeah. even even thinking of like Anthropics Claude or Meta's Llama, people think of when they hear LLM, they think of GPT. They don't even think of OpenAI, they think of GPT, right? So like, I think that this is a strategic move for Apple. I think it's something where it's going to be great for OpenAI. I'm curious to see how it all plays out though, because it is... There, I think behind the scenes, there's some interesting questions that are raised. I mean, Elon Musk is threatening to ban all Apple devices. I don't know if that's just craziness or if it's rooted in something that's like fairly reasonable. Um, so I, I, I think vote for craziness. <laughs> he he I, is developing a competitive AI. So I think that this, <laughs> he he plays, you know, the, right. the, the, the rash, irrational, but there's something under there, I think. Right. There's, yeah. So, so I feel like peeling back some of the layers, who knows, but I mean, I think that it, it makes sense for Apple and because they were clearly falling, you know, falling behind in the AI race, if you will, right? All of the announcements were coming from OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, Meta, it, uh, Amazon even had some, you know, announcements. It Pretty much Apple has been fairly quiet in the game since, you know, for the past 18 months or so. Um, so I feel like this is a way where they can kind of leapfrog. Maybe they don't, they don't have to worry about investing the money and the capital to, to build their own foundation models. And I think that this is a testament to the path forward in the future as a partnership. It's it's win-win relationships across different organizations so that we can all grow together. Um, I think that that's, that's one of the big things that I've taken away from this. That's, that's actually a good point. To the casual observer, like we see the big announcements of Microsoft investing like 10 billion in open AI, and then Apple making the partnership with open AI and there's sort of like all the, and everybody's using Nvidia chips to power all of this stuff. And, yep. and there's a bit of kind of combining of efforts and to your point, like white labeling. And, and this has happened many times with physical hardware and, and, and baseline applications. How is this going to impact the uses and quite frankly, the jobs, right? So how is this going to impact jobs moving forward? We know that AI eventually is going to be almost like the word processor and the, you know, the the office suites. Like it's going to be a, a series of tools that you're going to use in every, every job. Is it going to eliminate like, you know, word processing eliminated the typist pool? You had people that all they did was duplicate, copy and type and jobs like those. Computers. It's, yeah. With yeah. computers. And so how is this, this AI confluence of all these things going on? going to impact the jobs market, quite frankly, and big companies and monopolies and all these inter interacting parts? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, it's a it's a common question. Everyone tries to wrestle with it. The economists try to figure it out. You know, we don't really know what the effect of AI is going to have on specific jobs or specific industries. We do know what AI is good at, right, currently. And if you take that at, at the skill set level and compare that to human skill sets, okay, then then what comparable jobs can AI be doing? But that's you talking replacement. But don't forget the other mm -hmm. spectrum of this is it's going to create a lot of jobs, oh, yeah. a lot of opportunities. There's going to be new industries created just from being able to train an LLM or a small language model or to be able to train AI or create your own agents or things of that nature. So there's going to be a whole new plethora of jobs created from the evolution of AI. Now, I still think we have to talk about the skills AI is getting better at every day. We see the new reports coming out. You know, AI can pass the MCATs, can pass the LSATs, can uh, take your GREs, right? So at reasoning and at content creation and at understanding, it's getting really good at. And that's a level above simple math, right? So you think about jobs with simple math, you think about accounting jobs, um, audit jobs, things of that nature. I think you're gonna start to see those jobs evolve into more reasoning type jobs or creative type jobs or forensic accounting type jobs. Like you're gonna start to see it advance a little bit where the AI is gonna take on a lot of the base work, right? So we think about, you know, this AI bubble that we're in right now, and it keeps growing and growing and it'll burst one day. But when you think about the industries that are going to be affected the most, my personal opinion is accounting jobs, audit jobs, right? Simple math jobs. And again, I'm not 
downgrading what auditors do or what accountants do. I think there's different levels and you're going to see, I think, a big push in the accounting world or maybe maybe even they're going to put up a barrier of some sort, right? There's a lot of regulations in accounting. You never know what really can evolve from that. But when you think about the skills, I think about accounting as being that one of those first industries. And the second industry, and then I'll hand it off to Nick to give me some feedback on this because I know he's itching at the, itching here to give me some feedback. But <laughs> second industry, which hits close to home because I have three kids, it's education. I mean, I've been thinking about education for a long time since I've had kids. And honestly, I think the education system is broken today. It's still the same education system we had at the turn of the Industrial Revolution in the 1920s. So if you're in the same age group as another kid, you get put in the same belt as that kid and you get the same education as that kid, even though your skills might be different, your mindset might be different. You might have all these differences in in wants, needs and deficiencies and efficiencies, um, but you still get put on that same belt. So I think the education industry is ripe for a reimagining, a reinventing. Um, and I just read a great book by Salman Khan, who's the founder of Khan Academy. For those who don't know it, great resource for kids um, and, and personal level tutoring. And he writes a whole book about his partnership with OpenAI, actually. He has a partnership with OpenAI and Khan Academy and, you know, just how he's reimagining what the future of classrooms are going to look like. Imagine being taught geometry by the best geometry teacher in the world. And then just having facilitators help you understand that at your level. And those facilitators can be your own AI tutors that understand what you're good at, what you're not good at, what you need help with, uh, what you struggle with, what analogies work for you. Do you like soccer? I'll put everything in soccer terms. That's great. GPT is great at that. You know, explain to me healthcare in, in soccer terms. It does a great job, right? It creates the analogies and you're really good at that. So from a, from a parent perspective, I think education is also one of those industries that are ripe for reinvention. I love that. And I completely agree. Our education system is broken. And this is such an opportunity to bring education to where it should be. Because each one of us, each human being is unique. We each learn in different ways. We each have different strengths. We each have different weaknesses. Obviously, all of us need a core kind of like competency for foundation in certain skills like reading or writing, mathematics, communication, right? Some of these things. And it, it, but what's amazing is I think that AI will offer an opportunity to tailor and personalize um, it kind of like education plans for students to really maximize their gifts as well. I think a lot of times it's difficult when you have a, a gifted child in a very specific area and you can't necessarily, maybe a school system doesn't offer the appropriate like higher level or advanced, you know, courses for that student. These AI courses, holy cow, you, now you can have a personalized tutor that can take a, a child and really help them develop those gifts. And that that's one of the things I'm most excited about. There's so much it, it, opportunity within the education space. And, and it is ripe for reimagining because it hasn't been updated since the 1920s. Like that's shocking that with all of the technology that we have today, that we're still, you know, going through the same system that we had a hundred years ago. I, I, I will echo uh, your sentiments on the accounting side and where, how I would expand that too, is like many jobs that are, um, if there is a, concrete set of repeatable steps that a computer is very good at doing those steps, then those, those are all jobs that are, are fairly ripe for disruption. I will say, I don't believe that it's like going to be an overnight thing. I don't think that in 12 months, we're going to have no accountants or no contact center agents or anything like that. I don't I mean the, that either, by the way. I didn't right, right. <laughs> I, I think the next 10 years or so are going to be human and AI augmented. And then we're going to figure out, oh, well, it within this job, these are the things that the AI can take completely over from the human being. But these are the things that we really want the human being to, to, to stay doing. Because also, if you're an accountant and you have clients who want to know why they're paying taxes at the end of the year or what their tax return is, a human being is going to be the person who delivers that message most likely, right? You you want to be able to have some the, the human empathy and have a person that you can call if you're like upset because you have to pay more than you thought, or if you're happy and say like, thank you so much. Obviously the AI is a part of that, but I think you're going to see a lot of human augmentation. And to Josh's first point as well, I can't emphasize this enough. 
the amount of jobs and industries, the amount of industries that AI will create is massive. We are just scratching the surface on the opportunity and the potential of where AI is going. I think that all of the things Josh said, training models, training agents, learning how to do prompt engineering, once we, there's going to be new paradigms of software development. We're gonna have completely different desktop applications, mobile applications, and then down the road, may, who knows, maybe 20 or 30 years down the road, we'll have Jarvis and we'll have something that just does everything. I think that we're still a far way away from that. And we live in a world where competition thrives. So you're, you're, you're going to still see applications, competition, and all of this stuff. But I'm excited because I think that the, the way of the future, the AI-powered application boom that hasn't fully happened yet, we're just at the beginning still, that's going to create so much opportunity for new, completely new industries to come up, completely new job categories, and it's going to create a ton of opportunity worldwide for people to, you know, partake in the in the AI revolution. It's interesting, you know. Obviously, what I'm hearing is pers personalization at scale across many, many, many areas, and that's something that's a strong suit for the leveraging of AI. And I've, I'm hearing that. You know, if you're today, you're a marketer, maybe you're an AI capable marketer so that you know how to use the tools or an AI capable accountant and not meaning the cyborgs where they've got the neural link thing in their head, but that they are, they know how to use the tools, right? And so maybe that impacts the curriculum at a school or the way they use these tools so that you can go off in your individualized learning and then come back to collaborate. And I guess that opens the question of right now, we have, there's no way to really predict all the industries, but we do know that it could have the potential of those basic tools that were, you'd add to your resume. And now it's just assumed that you know how to use certain tools. And like, you just know how to use certain tools. If you're a creative, you use, you know, certain creative tools. If you're in an office, you know, you use certain office tools. But for this, it's gonna be, will how much will it permeate? And what does that create in the future? Is this going to be a positive impact that uplifts and said, all right, it makes my job easier. <laughs> I know how to trigger certain things so that I can do all these things. Or is it going to be like, now I'm answering to all these automated things? <laughs> like, how do we know in certain roles or industries if it's going to be a happy result or a scary result? Mm -hmm. And if you're looking to, to, to your point, further education used to be everybody go be a lawyer. Everybody go be a programmer. Like we go through those cycles of we need more nurses. We need more lawyers. We need more doctors. Is it going to be we all need to learn like AI, like is... I guess part of any curriculum is going to be, you know, the AI version of that will be part of your curriculum, yeah. leveraging these tools in your future industry, whatever that may or may not be that exists now. So how do we I know? If it's, say it's not even leveraging, Ken. It's actually probably understanding. Yeah. Because as we said in our previous podcast, you know, these tools are going to change all the time, right? right. ChatGPT is the word today. OpenAI is the word today, right? Like that's today. We don't know what's going to be in two years from now or six months from now or 12 months from now. So yeah. understanding these concepts what is generative AI? What can it do? What can it help me with? What can it do in this vertical? What does, you know, what are the applications for it? It's almost like, you know, when you learn math and then you learn applied math, it's like, wow. Like I didn't know math could be applied that way, but it kind of brings it down to that real level world. And I think that's really where the change is going to be is that, you know, just as today our standard curriculum based curriculum is, you know, English and math and history and, and whatever else it may be, AI is going to have to be one of those. I'd add like, you know, when, once calculators were invented for math, right? Like, yes, you learn how to do math without a calculator, but a calculator, but, but nine times out of 10 in the real world, once you're out of academia, you're using a calculator to, to solve a problem or a spreadsheet that has, that's basically a built-in calculator. It's going to be the same thing here as well, right? You, you need to understand this tool so that you can really just supercharge your own abilities. I, I don't believe that the AI is smarter than human beings. I, does it have more information in that, in that language model? Yes, absolutely, bar none. It has more information about more topics than I know about or either of you guys know about. But also, if I put ChatGPT on the same task that I had to do or that you can or Josh had to do, it would not do even close to the level of quality job that we are capable of. But what it can do is if we know how to use chat GPT and it can help be our thought partner and like help us brainstorm and get through some of those creative blocks quickly, 
holy cow, I can just increase my productivity by 20%, 30% per week. And then I'm a, an absolute beast at my job. And I'm able to kind of up level my skills a lot faster than I was previously. You I mean, you don't have to work four days a week going forward. Yeah. <laughs> One, I thought for sure Nick was going to was going to drop the uh, was going to name drop the Apple, you know, calculator for iPad that we don't need to do math anymore. We just have <laughs> Apple Calc do it. And be like, I don't need to know calculus. I'm done. Good. But on the same to the same point is, yes, we hope for utopic and we all talk about we're scared of what AI is going to do. But in the same sense, if I could tell AI to help my kid with their art project or their algebra homework and so I could go do something more fun, <laughs> you know, there's the balance of quality time with your kid versus all right i'm not stressing about i don't remember how to do damn algebra homework anymore <laughs> where is ai helpful versus where is ai furthering <laughs> the human condition you know i get it we're all going to become you know uh paint paint artists uh renditions in our spare time apparently and 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 you know write sonnets but yeah the reality is both interesting exciting and scary all at the same time and who knows what the future holds? I, I'm really curious to see what people think and what develops over the next few weeks and months and years. I completely agree. I think it's a, it's a wild time. But to Josh's point, the cool thing is we as a human, as humanity, have the ability to choose what direction it goes still. We're, right. Like we're not at a point where we've where we've lost control or where that that choice is out of our control. So I think it's about having faith coming together as a humanity, making decisions to say we want this to be a, a utopic outcome, not a dystopic or an apocalyptic outcome. So what do we need to do in order to achieve that? So I think that and, and that's the cool thing is like that's totally within our our power and our control as a humanity. And that's our job is the more people who understand AI, the more people who have a base level of education on it, the more we can dispel some of the fears and we can say, we make educated choices on how we move forward towards a better future where, I mean, where, where life is better, where we're spending less time working, where we're spending more time enjoying and being fulfilled. Not that there's anything wrong with work. If you want to work, work more, but I'm a good chiller. I like to chill as well. So that's just me. <laughs> I echo everything Nick says. I agree with that for sure. It's up yes. to us. The hope is a personalized assistant to help you in all aspects of work and life. <laughs> I'm curious to see what audience members think about the direction that AI is going. I mean, right now there's so many stories in the news in so many different directions. It's the, the what is it the is it the Hollywood scary story of the AI as a villain? Is it the, you know, AI is the saving humanity from itself? Or is it just simply another tool that hopefully makes right. things incrementally better for more people as we go forward?